Today, Little Man and I are going to talk to you about the spleen and what part it plays in sickle cell. So your spleen is an organ located on the left side of your rib cage, and it has two main important functions within the world of sickle cell. Uh, so your spleen uh, does two main things. It filters out the damaged red blood cells within your body, and it also fights infection. So uh, within those red blood cells, remember we talked about those sickle cells um, become damaged because they circulate through the blood, uh, changing shape through those tactoids and then going back up to the lungs and uh, reoxygenating over and over again until they become that deformed shape. Well, when they pass through the spleen, the spleen puts the red blood cells through a test. And if the red blood cells are damaged enough, then the spleen filters them right out. And so you can see that within sickle cell, because you have all those damaged red blood cells, all those sickle cells, that your spleen is working on overdrive all the time. The other thing your spleen does is it acts as a frontline defender for when bacteria or viruses enter your body. So when there is a, a bacteria or virus detected, your spleen and your lymph nodes are the first responders to send out those lymphocytes or white blood cells that... Um, go and kill off the bacteria. So one of the big, really kind of scary things that can happen with your spleen with sickle cell is that all of those red blood cells will wind up going inside your spleen and not coming back out. This is called a splenic sequestration crisis, and it is fatal if not caught in time. So one of the things that uh, parents are taught first off, as soon as you find out your child is diagnosed, is to feel for that spleen. So I'm gonna use Sal and show you how you actually do this. So here we go. So right here is a, the rib cage. And so you start up at the rib cage and I'm pressing on his rib cage, hi buddy. And if you feel just below the rib cage in a healthy person, you shouldn't be able to feel any spleen at all because it actually is protected by your rib cage. And somebody with sickle cell, after about six months, you'll start to feel just a little bit of a tip. Now the size of a spleen is measured by fingertips. So it's one tip, two tip, three tip. And depending on if you're a man or a woman will depend on obviously like I could get to four fingertips and my husband would only be at three. So making sure that whoever feels the spleen does it um, is the one that's always reporting and feeling can be really helpful for doctors. So the way that they showed us is to find that bottom rib right, and then to just feel right below it. And we like to do it. Uh, we, Sophia doesn't actually have her spleen anymore because she did have that splenic sequestration. But when she did, we would feel it every day to kind of get a baseline. And she always hung out right around one, one and a half. So when it got bigger or it got harder, that was an instant phone call to the hematologist and usually resulted in us coming into clinic to get it checked out, see what her counts were. One of the things that happens in that splenic sequestration is your spleen will pull in um, a ridiculous amount of your red blood cells and it leaves nothing for the rest of the body. So uh, it also can explode, which would cause you go to go into sepsis. So a splenic sequestration or an enlarged spleen is very serious in sickle cell and something you want to get checked out immediately. Um, also, because that spleen is working on overdrive, um, eventually it just shrivels up and dies. So you absolutely can live without a spleen. Your liver and your lymph nodes will uh, pick up the other duties that it does, but the longer you're able to hold on to that spleen, the better. However, eventually in the world of sickle cell, even the people that are lucky enough to keep their spleen don't have a functioning spleen after uh, a certain number of years. So. That's our talk on spleen, and stay tuned as we continue to talk about the different complications. And this month, our goal is to end on a message of hope, so stay tuned for that as well. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org. Consider signing up for our newsletter. It's just an email on our front page, and post any comments or questions below. Thanks.